Dune, Part 2, Everything We Know. We're one step closer to returning to Arrakis, folks. The new trailer for Dune, Part 2 came out this afternoon, and it looks wild, to say the least. The next chapter of Denis Villeneuve's long-awaited film adaptation will premiere in theaters on November 3rd. A chronicle of the film by Paul Atreides, Timothy Chalamet, Cheney, Zendaya Coleman, and the Freeman struggle to reclaim their lands before it's too late. No wonder fans are excited to see how Paul and Cheney handle the next go-around. When Dune premiered in October 2021, it was a huge success, earning $402 million in box office receipts. In his review for Esquire, film critic Chris Nashawati even went so far as to call Dune the best sci-fi movie of the decade. What seems to have saved Villeneuve's Dune from the failure of previous attempts was his decisive decision to break the massive story into two parts. So the first movie ended with a cliffhanger, but the sequel is sure to make ends meet. Finally, Warner Brothers chose a swoon-worthy cast to complete the film. In the trailer, we see Chalamet leading the army while flirting with Cheney Zendaya. We also got a quick look at the entire cast, which includes Austin Butler, Florence Pugh, Rebecca Ferguson, Stellan Skarsgård, Leah Seydoux, Dave Bautista, Javier Bardem, Josh Brolin and more. Christopher Walken will also appear, but his character was absent from the first trailer. Formerly Warner Brothers Presented footage to audiences at CinemaCon 2023 in Las Vegas, where Chalamet and Zendaya even appeared. The first part is more of a contemplative film. The second part is an action-packed, epic film about the war, said Villeneuve. We visited all the new locations. I didn't want the feeling of repetition. These are all new decorations. Everything is new. This time it's full IMAX. Viewers also got a glimpse of Atriides getting ready to fight Austin Butler's Fade Rauta. A new character, bald and pale, was revealed through a disturbing poster. It's certainly one way to get rid of our Elvis notion of Butler, but one thing's for sure, we're going back to Arrakis. In the second part, viewers can expect Villeneuve's plot to favor the second half of Herbert's Dune, which traces Paul's rise to power among the Freemen and his eventual rebellion against the Padishah Emperor Shad Dam IV. Paul's path to becoming the legendary Kwisatz Haderach will test his character and put his life in jeopardy. Meanwhile, the Atriides family expands, Paul and Cheney become romantically intertwined as his clairvoyant visions foretold, and Lady Jessica gives birth to a daughter, Alia, with extraordinary Bene Gesserit abilities. We won't spoil all the delightful twists, but rest assured that the outlines provided in the last half of the novel allow for an exciting, more story-driven story. It's going to be another great desert trip, teasing. This is a journey in which Paul Atreides and his mother, Lady Jessica, come into contact with Freeman culture and meet Freeman. This is Paul's journey against the enemy. It's a film that's going to be more cinematic. On the red carpet of Bones and All, when Chalamet was asked about revisiting old work, he commented on revisiting Dune, Part 1 in the midst of work on Dune, Part 2. It's exciting. This is something that cannot be done with films. Reconsider, said the actor. Actually, I feel the same way with Dune. Talking about how cycles correspond to life. I was younger when I did it the first time and was blown away by how big this movie was. And now that Paul Atreides is getting more confident in his heels, I feel more confident in my heels. Looks like we can count on a more confident and confident Paul Atreides. Unsurprisingly, when Paul committed the first murder at the end of the first part, it marked his transition from adolescence to maturity. Since the second part requires more of Paul as a warrior and leader, as well as relying on his power of foresight, the character, and, it seems, Chalamet, will have to grow. But the second part is not just a Paul Atreides show, as expected, the cast expanded. 
After a long wait and a lot of rumors, Villeneuve brought in several big hitters to close the story. Christopher Walken joins the cast as Shad Dam IV, Emperor of the Known Universe, and Florence Pugh joins as his daughter, Princess Irulan, who later becomes Paul's wife, making Pugh and Chalamet the second time they've played on-screen spouses since Little Women in 2019. Filming is underway and Pugh was spotted on set in Italy dressed as Princess Irulan. Chalamet was delighted with Pugh, telling Variety, Florence is really special. She is an incredible actress. She was incredible in Dune, seriously incredible. She brought seriousness to the role. Meanwhile, two more actors will join the roster, Sahila Yakub will play Shashakli, commander of the fearsome Fidakin Paul, and Leah Seydoux will play Lady Margot Fenring, the Bene Gesserit, wife of Count Hazimir Fenring. Lady Margot and her husband, who remains uncasted, plot against the Harkonnen and refuse to act against the Atriides family. Perhaps the most important casting decision was Austin Butler, yes, Elvis himself, as Fadrada Harkonnen, Paul's enemy and nemesis, who becomes Paul's main adversary in his quest for absolute power. Villeneuve said that Fadrout is definitely going to be a very, very important character in the second part. Speaking to backstage, Butler teased a sophisticated take on the villain. It's that the bad guy in the world doesn't feel like the bad guy, the actor said. He feels like the hero of his own story. And it can be tricky with some characters, with others it's easier, but you shouldn't judge the character, and you should find a way to feel motivated for any of your actions. So we talked a lot and created this together. Butler also revealed that he spent months training with the Navy SEALs to physically prepare for the role, so no doubt he's more than ready for the climactic knife fight between Paul and Fade Ruta. But fans have raised one major concern about Butler's casting, what if he brings the voice of Elvis to Arrakis? If you haven't been following Butler's march through awards season, you may not have noticed that the widely nominated actor for his lead role as Elvis Presley seems to be trapped in the King of Rock's vocal cords. Butler's voice coach warned that Elvis's voice could be there forever, saying, it's real, it's not contrived. But it's not just Phaedrotha that plays a major role, in fact, all of the Harkonnens are destined to play a bigger role in part two, as Paul confronts both Phaedrotha and Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. Meanwhile, Alia and the Baron are mystically entwined, and surprising connections are discovered between House Harkonnen and House Atriides. For the second one, I want more flexibility and it will be possible to go a little deeper into some of these details," Vilnev said. It's like a game of chess. A decision I made very early on was that the first part would be more about Paul Atriides and the Ben Gesserit and his first contact with another culture. Batista echoed Vilnev's comments about the second part's change of tone, telling Collider, it's so strong compared to the first film. The first movie was just an introduction to what this movie is all about. Political and intense. And there are moments of frivolity where, there are, a few funny moments, and they are a bit of absurd humor, but there are such moments. So it's a lot more dynamic than the first movie.